radicular or periapical cysts are a common radiographic finding for many dentists. In fact, it is the most commonly occurring odontogenic cyst. Radiographically, these cysts present as well-circumscribed radiolucent lesions, although there have been reports of radicular cysts presenting as mixed lesions, albeit rarely. These cysts are endodontic in origin and must be associated with a non-vital tooth to be a radicular cyst. Radicular cysts are usually diagnosed in permanent teeth, with less than 1% of all radicular cysts being found in primary teeth. Their pathogenesis is caused by many factors rooted in epithelial stromal interactions. The most likely cause is continued proliferation of epithelial rests of malaise, which are remnants of Hertwig's epithelial root sheath in the periodontal ligament space. Within the cyst itself, there is fluid containing cytokines, which contribute to the expansion of the cystic cavity, such as IL-1 alpha, TNF alpha, MCP1, and rantes. Clinically, there are few symptoms to indicate the presence of a radicular cyst. They are usually asymptomatic and are often an incidental finding when taking radiographs. There will be a radiolucency present at the apex of a non-vital tooth and possibly some evidence of bone resorption. Although it is possible, radicular cysts generally do not cause expansion of the cortex. Radicular cysts are extremely common, especially in the jaw. Approximately one half to three fourths of all cysts in the jaw are radicular cysts. Being so common, these cysts can happen at any age. They are rarely seen in the first decade of life, however, and occur most often in the third to sixth decades. Radicular cysts can most frequently be observed in the maxillary anterior, followed by the maxillary posterior. In the mandible, they are more common in the posterior than the anterior. The defining radiographic characteristic of radicular cysts is their definition and location. Usually, these well-defined radiolucencies are found at the very apex of a non-vital tooth, but occasionally they can also be located on the mesial or distal radicular surface, originating from accessory canals. They are infrequently found in deep periodontal pockets. 60% of radicular cysts are seen in the maxilla, predominantly in the incisor and canine regions. Radicular cysts of the lateral incisors have been shown to expand into the nearby maxillary antrum. Although much more common on permanent teeth, radicular cysts can be associated with non-vital primary molars and subsequently develop on the buccal surface of the succedaneous premolars. These radiolucencies have well-defined corticated borders and can be associated with loss of cortex and increased sclerotic borders. They are most commonly curved or circular in shape unless they are influenced by other surrounding corticated structures. Although most commonly radiolucent, long-standing cysts can have developed dystrophic calcifications, leading to a mixed lesion appearance. Radicular cysts can affect surrounding structures, causing inferior displacement of the mandibular alveolar nerve canal. Resorption can also lead to a curved outline, which can in turn affect related non-vital teeth. This can cause invagination into the sinus or the expansion of outer cortical plates of the maxilla or mandible in a curved or circular pattern. When coming up with a differential diagnosis, there are a few other pathologies to consider. First off, there are periapical granulomas, which precede the formation of periapical or radicular cysts. Periapical granulomas also present as radiolucencies over the apex of a non-vital tooth. This is a chronic inflammatory lesion and has been shown to have high levels of MMP, matrix metalloproteinase, which is a protease enzyme. Periapical cemento-osseous dysplasia, or PCOD, is also another possible diagnosis. Resulting from a reactive or dysplastic process and occurring most often in the anterior mandible, PCOD lesions can also appear as round, well-defined radiolucencies with a sclerotic border. However, these lesions are located at the apex of vital teeth. These lesions also do not cause resorption, but can lead to a widened PDL and loss of the lamina dura at the apex of the affected teeth. PCOD is also asymptomatic, much like radicular cysts. 
The demographics for PCOD are different than that of a radicular cyst, usually occurring in middle-aged females, especially those of East Asian or African origin. These benign lesions can change their appearance radiographically, changing from radiolucent to a mixed appearance to radiopaque as they age. Traumatic bone cysts, also known as simple bone cysts, usually occur in the posterior mandible. This is technically a pseudocyst rather than a true cyst due to the fact that it lacks an epithelial lining. It is also an empty cavity versus a fluid-filled cyst. Although these pseudocysts can also be asymptomatic, they are usually associated with trauma and occur most often in teenagers, either male or female. Radiographically, they appear as well-defined radiolucencies that can exhibit scalloping at the borders. These benign lesions can also cause bone resorption, which can be seen on the radiograph. Surgical defects or periapical scars should also be considered, but only if there is a history of previously treated apical pathology. Other possible pathologies to consider include developmental odontogenic cysts, odontogenic tumors, giant cell lesions, metastatic disease, and primary osseous tumors. Treating radicular cysts centers on the removal of the infection, and there are a few different treatment options. The non-vital tooth can be extracted, and the socket can be curataged. Root canal treatment can also be performed with an apicoectomy, also requiring curatage of the lesion. Resolution of the cyst can often occur after endodontic treatment, possibly due to the decreased inflammatory exudate present. Incision and drainage can also be performed to eliminate the source of infection. Persistent inflammation that remains after treatment can be due to six potential causes. Intraradicular infection due to a complex root system, extraradicular infection, extruded root canal filling leading to a foreign body reaction, an accumulation of endogenous cholesterol crystals that irritate periapical tissues, true cystic lesions, or scar tissue healing of the lesion.